So question three then from paper two of the 2022 National Five. Little three mark question here. Composite volume. A concrete gate post is made in the shape of a cuboid with a sphere on top. It gives you the dimensions here and you have to calculate the volume needed to make it for three marks. Well, let's just form the figure's answer then. You've got a sphere to work out, you've got a cuboid to work out and you're going to add the two together because they're joined on. That sphere's not been dug out of it, it's been stuck on it. Well, a sphere. That'll be 4 upon 3 pi r cubed. Now, accuracy. Although in the marking scheme for this, there's no marks actually for rounding it off a specific way. There's only three marks altogether. The radius. Notice 0 0.4. Now that can't be a measurement. That can't just be given correct to just one significant figure. Because if it was, you could only put one significant figure down here for your answer. No. I reckon these are to be taken as accurate rather than taken as measurements that have been made. There's a big difference there between an accurate number and a rounded number because you wouldn't measure that to the nearest 10 centimetres. Usually in building construction you measure things to the nearest millimetre and you've got that disparity anyway. If this was a made measurement, that'd be the nearest 10 centimetres, that'd be the nearest centimetre. I would just take them as being exact. Well, it's just formula figures answer. You've got a sphere, work out its volume, a cuboid, work out its volume, and add the two together, making sure you put the correct units in the answer. Whether you're sticking with metres, which I would do, or whether you're changing it into centimetres, in which case you'll have loads of centimetres cubed. So first of all, the top, well, that's a sphere. You either remember this, 4 upon 3 pi r cubed, or you can look up the front, 4 upon 3 pi r cubed. So what are the figures that you put in? Well, the radius isn't 0 0.4. That's all the way across. It's going to be half of that. 0 0.4 is the diameter. So that'll be 0 0.2 metres. So pop them into the formula. 4 upon 3, now pi, leave pi alone. If you put in 3.14, you've immediately introduced a rounded off number which limits how much, how many figures you can put into your answer and starts messing up with other intermediate answers. Just keep it as exact, assuming that that's exact. So leave that as pi, assuming that the calculator's holding an awful lot of that that can be taken as exact, times 0 0.2 cubed. Now doing that gets the first mark. Putting 0 0.2 into the formula for the volume of a sphere. There's no mark as such for this specific answer because there's only three marks altogether. The way it's going to work is there'll be one mark for putting the appropriate figure into the formula for a sphere. They have another mark for putting the appropriate figure into the volume of a cuboid and knowing to add them. And the final mark will be for just all the calculations and also having the units in it. So there's no mark for this bit. So you press the buttons and you get 0 0.033. Put down as much as you like, just don't put down too little. And so on. Now, writing it that way implies that I've kept it all. That's a completely accurate number. If you don't like doing that, because you think that little ellipsis looks messy, you can round it off and just put down this, for instance. I'll put it over here. 0 0.0335. Keeping three figures, for instance. Maybe I'll put an extra one in. Remember, the rule for intermediate answers is have at least one more figure in your answer than you need in your intermediate answer than you need in your final answer. So you may as well put as many as you like down, as long as it doesn't fill the page. Now, cuboid. From the cuboid, that was the sphere, this is the cuboid. That's just length times breadth times height. Now the length and the breadth are both 0.48 because it said the base was a square. The height isn't 2.4, so I better put this down at the side. It's 2.4 minus the 0.4, so that'll be 2 metres. Pop that in. So that'll be 0 0.48 times 0 0.48 times 2. Now that doesn't get a mark yet until you've shown that you're going to add the two together. So you multiply that out and you get 0 0.4608 metres cubed. So, so far we've got these two answers. 
these two intermediate answers. To get the final volume, you're just going to add the two of them together. Add the volume of the sphere and the volume of the cuboid. So zero point, well, I'm just going to go with that now, zero three three five one. I have to just go with this one because I've lost that unless you took time to store that whole value somewhere in a separate memory. If that was just stored in answer, as soon as you pressed equal again here, that was lost and this replaced it. So I'll be going with that. Plus 0 0.4608. Now that's the next mark for knowing them to, to add them together, for putting two in here and knowing to add them. Now it's just add the two together. And that comes to 0 0.4943 and, well, not really, and so on. It only goes on for another figure because I used the rounded off value. However, I'm going to make this commensurate with the figures that I've been given. I can see I've only got two figures here. So I think I'll just round that off to 0 0.49 meters cubed for the final mark. You could put the usual and just put down three figures, 494 if you wished. Now, these intermediate answers can be an annoying thing if you're worried about how many figures to put down. And the general rule is put down more than you need and round off at the end. However, you can avoid that if you just do the whole thing in one go without intermediate answers. So, form of a sphere, form of a cuboid, add them together in one go. So the total volume would be the volume of the sphere plus the volume of the cuboid. 4.3 pi r cubed plus length times breadth times height where as before the radius is a half of the 0 0.4 so that's 0 0.2 meters and the height is 2.4 less this extra bit at the top minus the 0 0.4 which is 2 meters and then just pop them in 4.3 leave pi alone if they're accurate keep that accurate times 0 0.2 cubed plus 0 0.48 times 0 0.48 times 2. Now doing that would be two of the marks because now you've put 0 0.2 into the formula for the sphere. You've put 2 into the formula for the cuboid and you've shown you've added them together which was the first two marks but it works out quite neatly doing it like this. And the last mark quite rightly is just for pressing the buttons and writing the answer appropriately with the correct units. And I say appropriately, meaning round it off, although there's no mark specifically for rounding off, but just round it off appropriately to your own judgment according to the information you've been given. So type it in, press the button, and of course you get the same answer. 0 0.4943 and so on. Now just round it off appropriately. Again, I think I'll just go for the two just to match with these, but you could just as validly go for three significant figures and put 494 meters cubed. Now, you, if you'd gone for centimeters, you'd have had exactly the same figures, just the sizes would be different. Only instead of meters cubed here, with centimeters cubed, since in a cubic meter there's going to be a hundred times a hundred times a hundred cubic centimeters that's a million of them the answer will just be a million times bigger than that so that'll be move the point six places so that'd be four nine with four zeros after it or four nine four with three zeros or four nine four three with two zeros Question four then from the 2022 National 5 Paper 2 six mark question. It's got it written down in three parts, but it's really just the one part because you really want to write all of this stuff down in one go. Anyway, simultaneous equation type question. The one where you're going to use elimination because you're going to form two equations in two variables and then multiply them appropriately, scale them so that one of them get knocked out and you end up with one equation in one variable because that's all you can solve. So what does it say, first of all? You can buy four mangoes and three apples at some place, some fruit shop, for 4 25 And then again, you can buy five mangoes and two apples in the same place, presumably about the same time, otherwise the price might change, 
for 470. If that's the case, calculate algebraically. So don't just guess numbers and try them. Calculate algebraically the cost of a mango and the cost of an apple. Well, there's no variables mentioned, so you have to introduce your own variables. And at the same time, choose an appropriate unit. Now that's got £4.25 to the decimal point. Individually, they probably cost less than a pound, so I'll probably go for pence. So I'll introduce my variables like this. Let M be the cost of a mango in pens. Let A be the cost of an apple in pens. Well, you could have gone for pounds if you wanted. Now, having done that, you can now translate this information. Four mangoes, so that's four of M. And three apples, so that's three of A. Comes to £4.25. Well, I'm going for whole numbers. I'm going for pence. Now, that, in fact, is the first part. And that's worth a mark. I'm going to pop that mark over there, though. Now, the next bit of information. Five mangoes and two apples comes to £4.70. That's £470. And that was actually part B. But you really want them together. You want all this to just to flow together. You want them to be together here. Now, that was a mark. Now, algebraically, find the cost of a mango and the cost of an apple. Now, I wanted them both beside each other here so that I could give them names, one and two, because what I'm going to do now is scale them. I'm going to multiply them to get the same number of M's or the same number of A's, whichever is the easier. Well, it'll be easier to get A's the same. So that's my plan. I'm going to put my plan here. I'm going to eliminate A by getting the same number of A's. In order to do that, I'm going to multiply these equations appropriately. So this first equation, I could get a six there if I doubled everything. And in this equation, I could get a six there if I tripled everything. Maybe that means doubling every single thing, not just the A, because it wouldn't be balanced if you only doubled that amount and then left them alone. Now, having done that, just do it now. So double everything. Two fours are eight. Two six threes are six. And double that will be 850. Tripling everything here. Well, three fives are 15. Two, three twos are six, and then I want three of them, so I'll just put down this zero. That's 21, two, one, four, one, oh. Now, doing that gets a mark. Oh, you might have decided to make the M's the same, but then you'd have to multiply the first equation by five and the second equation by four and end up with even bigger numbers. Now, now that you've got them the same, I'm going to subtract them because obviously the sixes will knock each other out. But the way I'm going to subtract them is actually, if I, if I subtract them the way they are, I'll have a negative and a negative. I think I'll just be a wee bit fancy, and instead of doing number one, take away two, I think I'll do number two, take away one, except it's no longer the original number one and two, so I'll put a wee dash down there. And obviously that's going to come to zero. Then the other way around will be then, 15, take away the eight, that's seven M. And then this, Take away that will be 560. So if 7m is 560, that means m is going to be 560 divided by 7. So that's nice and neat because that's 80. That's quite good. Now getting that m equals 80 is worth a mark. Now that you've got what m is, you can go back to one of the original ones and find a. So what I'll say now is this. I'll substitute m equals 80 in... The original number 2, because that looked easier. So I've got 5 times 80. I'll just put the working down. 5 times 80 plus 2a equals 470. So the 2a will be, now that's 400. So taking the 400 away leaves you just with 70. I'll just go straight down to this. And 2 into 70 goes 35. Doing that gets a mark. But of course, those M's and A's were your own private variables. The question didn't say what's the value of M and what's the value of A. The question said, what's the cost of a mango and what's the cost of an apple? So now you just need to retranslate back to the original. You started off by taking the words in the question and creating a variable for it. Now that you've got your variables, you need to translate them back to the original words. So M equals 80 means the cost of a mango is 80 pence. A mango costs 80 pence, an apple costs 35 pence. And having done that, now you get the final mark.